Um, I know that on the topic it says Adobe Mix, okay, but we are also going to be looking at Adobe Fix as well. Now, for those of you who have never used these two apps before, right, now, it seems a bit confusing, right? First of all, the two names, right, only differ by just one letter, Adobe Fix and Adobe Mix. Uh, and the two icons also look very, very similar. So I always press the wrong one. Okay, I don't know about you, uh, but uh, from time to time I press the wrong one. Um, okay, another, another poll, okay. Uh, show of hands, who's on Apple device today? <laughs> Apple devices? <laughs> Apple devices? Wow, okay. Uh, who's on Android device then? Okay, well, Android. <laughs> okay, uh, here's a bit of disappointing news for you. Uh, uh, Android users, right, you have limitations in the performance capabilities of the software. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, right, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys know this stuff, but you know, Android, the catch up rate for their, their OS, right, is slower than, than Apple. And also, they have to factor in for minimum hardware requirement. Uh, so, uh, in, that, in that aspect, Apple has done better you know, because they have more consistent hardware. It is easier to actually you know, come up with uh, the software for, for, uh, for Apple. So, they, uh, and if you try to search for Adobe Fix, right? Uh, uh, sorry, Photoshop Fix, right? On the uh, Play Store, you will not even find it at all. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Well, yet, yet. Okay, it doesn't exist yet. They are still tooling it up. They are still doing some uh, fine tuning. So that's why I'm using an iPad today. I'm not using my Android device. Okay. Uh, but for those of you who are on Apple, uh, for those of you who are on Android device, don't worry. Okay. You still can use uh, Adobe Photoshop Mix. Okay. But like I said, uh, there are limitations to what you can actually do. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Can I just assume that everybody already is a Photoshop user in one way or another? Or at least like take photos? Okay, it, okay don't worry. Whether or not you've used it before, this session is for you. Okay, whether or not you, you have used Photoshop before, or you don't know how to use Photoshop, uh, you notice that I actually gave you guys a piece of paper, right? Okay. Uh, yes, that piece of paper is for you to write. Okay, that's a good thing, number one. Number two, the paper is also for you, for you to take pictures with them. Because we need to take pictures against a white background. Okay, so there's a double use for the piece of paper. So maybe when you write, write, try not to write too far down. Maybe when you take a picture, we may need a white, uh, a white surface. Or you can use a table. The table is grey. So I think, I think it's good enough. I thought, I couldn't remember. I thought the table is kind of a wooden texture. Right. Okay, so what we're going to do now, right, is I'm going to start off with Photoshop Fix, actually. So this is the one here. Uh, so why should I open up? Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a while. For those of you who are on Apple device, you can go ahead and download the app right now. <laughs> okay? Uh, if you don't have the app, you may want to download the app right now. Uh, let's get everyone on the same page. And while you're at it, right, you know we're going to use Adobe Photoshop Mix later. So you might as well get both downloads going on at the same time. So that you can follow, follow on. Uh, oh, look at that. It's Linus's face. Okay. Yeah, but it's okay. We're going to do it that way. Okay. So Linus get a bit of preview like what we're going to, what we're going to do here. <laughs> Yeah, that, that photo was actually taken a few years ago. You know, I, I was like looking for a picture to use. So then I dug through the old Creative Crew archives. Then I realized that hey, we did a photo shoot once, and everyone's in it. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So we will we'll give everyone maybe about uh, three to five minutes to start with the app. I don't know how fast is the is the four G speed here or three G whatever you're getting. Is it, is it very big? Uh, I guess it should be this kind of app should be at least 50 or 100 meg on I think about 60 plus megabyte. 60 plus megabyte. But with 4G, usually 60 plus is no issue. No, it's really not that. <laughs> you see what, that's why I think 3 to 5 minutes you should be able to handle it. Unless the, the 4G connection here is very, very bad. Let me see, am I, am I getting 4G here? Uh, I'm getting 3G plus here.
Okay, the, the file is a bit big, uh, so it takes a while. To... So this photo I think was taken about, well, how many did we take this? Uh, we took this about three years ago, like 2012, yeah. So this was Linus, how it looks like three years ago. Uh, so, okay, uh, the, this is, if you look down at the bottom, right, you will probably see, you'll probably see some stuff that are very, very familiar, like for example, crop, uh, adjust, uh, liquefy. So now what they've done is that, one thing that uh, you might be quite interested in is that they have actually moved liquefy to Adobe Photoshop Fix. So you can imagine what you can do to Linus later. So <laughs> we also have the healing brush here. <laughs> we have smooth function, light function, color function, uh, pain, and also the focus. I'll go through all this one by one, uh, okay? So that you all know what it does. Some are pretty standard, uh, like for example, right, crop. You know, you know crop, what crop does really. So uh, the good thing about crop, right, is that it doesn't just crop. Uh, you can also maintain right, what kind of a shape you want. For example, right, if you want it to be 3x4, 4x3, 4, uh, 2x3, which uh, a normal photo, if you didn't know, right, is actually 2x3. Or 16x9, which is like how you're, if you wanted to show it on TV, then obviously it needs to be 16x9. Okay? But I'm going to keep it to the original. Okay? That means to say that I do not want to, the aspect ratio of the height to the width to change. I want to keep it the way it is. Okay? As you can see that, the, what, what I really do like about this is that as you start to crop, right, it starts to also re, readjust the frame for you. you know, so what is, that's one of the big problems that I hate about Photoshop, that is as you crop, right, and then it becomes so small, uh, because you have a very big image, so it doesn't matter. As you crop, it's like, I can't really see where I'm going now, but you can see that as I'm cropping, right, it updates, and I can move this inside here, I guess. Uh, I have to apologize to uh, Linus, I have to crop off your fireworks logo. <laughs> he, he loves his fireworks, so... And then that's why he made this yellow shirt just for it. And you can see that because you can see that his eye line is a little bit crooked. So we, you can see at the bottom here, we've got this little wheel here that we can spin. So I can spin the wheel so that we can try to get Linus, the eye, to be straight. Okay? So even though he's sitting a bit crooked, doesn't matter. We can move this until he's straight here, right? Now. Okay, so we're happy with that. You know, you can, I'm just going to adjust the prop a little bit more. Move him inside here. Okay. So we're happy with it now, okay? Now bear with me in this crash. Uh, you notice that I'm actually using a very, very old iPad. This is iPad 2, okay? A very, uh, and it's not even using lightning. You can use the whole adapter here. So it just proves to you, right, that uh, you don't need to be using the latest Apple devices to understand. this thing. You've got a very good old iPad. I don't know if it works on an iPad 1, uh, maybe in my, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. There you go, it's crop. Okay, so crop function, very simple. I'm gonna move on to adjust, okay? Uh, so if you guys want to try, if you guys have already downloaded it and you want to try it out, you know, please feel free to try it out. Uh, we're going to move over to adjust. And you can see that just adjust, right, you know, most of the things inside here you can do on Photoshop, you know. Uh, if you already know Photoshop, uh, you can just run through this very, very quickly. You just need to get used to the, to the interface now. Obviously, a touch interface, right, has certain, uh, has certain, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, advantages because I can zoom in like this using my fingers. I can zoom up like this. So you don't have to use a scroll view, you know, and then, uh, so it's very, very quickly, and it's very, very touch interactive, you know. You don't have to use your mouse wherever you want. Later on, when we get up to, to more specific details that we are touching up or changing mouse, you just use our fingers and just touch those specific areas, okay. But in this case, you know, if you uh, want to change the exposure, you can increase the exposure, make him a more high key look. You know, or you can darken down, you want to see the dark side of Linus, you can drag it down and then play around with the exposure here like that. Okay. Uh, the exposure is quite alright. Uh, contrast, okay. Uh, if you don't know what contrast is, contrast basically is the uh, ratio between the darker and the brightest area. So if you increase the contrast, right, you can see that the shadows become really dark, the highlights become very, very bright. And if you drop the contrast, you can see that he's very, very flat now. You know, it almost looks like there's no lighting in his face. It's all very, very flat. Okay, so I'm just going to keep that about somewhere in the middle. Maybe a little bit more contrast. Uh, saturation is quite fun. You know, saturation, you can make him black and white. So, more vintage looking. Uh, or you can have like a halfway through, you know, slightly desaturated kind of look. You can make him very, very orange. Okay. Um, shadows. Now, you notice that there's a shadows and highlights uh, uh, function over here. So, how this actually works, right, is that this will only affect the darker colors, the colors like between 75%, uh, sorry, 0 to 25% darkness. So if you darken this, right, you can see that the shadows now become very, very dark around this. Well, the area, uh, the top of small head is now very, very dark now. 
And if we increase this, you can see that now all the shadows, all the dark areas, where you can see all the areas under this chip, you know, all become very, very bright now. Okay, so very even lighting. Uh, and then highlights is the complete opposite of shadows. Uh, highlights, you will only control the very, very bright areas, the top 80% of the, of the brightness level. So if you increase this, you can see that now the white is very, very below, it looks like it's got very easy skin now. Uh, if you pull it down, you know, this is really good function, right? You know how like, sometimes you take a photo and then you did blotch or you're sweaty and then you have very, very glowy skin, you know, this, this will really, really help to like, kind of dampen everything down a little bit more, okay? Uh, there are many ways of doing it, this is just one of the ways of doing it. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm actually quite happy with all the, the settings over here. So I just change it very, very slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Uh, the processing speed, you can see that even for old iPad 2, it's actually quite fast, okay? Uh, let's get to the fun part here, okay? The fun part, liquify. Yeah, now we get to liquify. Uh, so at this point of time, right, I know that you may not have a photo with you. So at this point of time, if you happen to have this app uh, downloaded, you wanna try it out. I'm going to invite you to take a selfie of yourself, okay? Uh, the two of you, I'm assuming that you are friends, right? You can try taking a PD together. You will notice that this app, right, actually has recognized Linus's face. Even though he's wearing glasses, they, they identify where his eyes, where his nose, where his cheekbones, where his mouth is, and where his chin is. You know that this is actually the most important part of your face, I know these are quite few parts. Uh, I'm going to show you guys what end is up later, you know, because my friend came into my office this morning and he said, he saw me doing this, you know, because I'm preparing for the presentation. So he said, hey, you know, uh, what are you doing, you know, then I'll show you what this can actually do. Okay, and he said, my, oh, we took a, I took a picture of my, had a family photo, and you know, like how uh, the older grandmother, you know, something was found on the camera, like squinting, you know, so I said, hey, do you think that we can fix this? Okay, and I said, I don't know, you know we can try. Because there's so many faces inside the photo. Amazingly, you actually recognize every single face inside that photo. And we managed to add a smile to her face. And we managed to also make her eyes less windy. Okay, so I'll show you the end result a little bit later. Uh, but, uh, so, while you guys are at it, take a selfie. If you don't want to use your own face, go and find, a fa go Google a face. Okay, Google somebody's face, Taylor Swift or something. Okay, then go, let's put the face down here. We're going to do something to the face. Okay. <laughs> Give you guys a, a few moments. Let's let's load you. You can if you download it onto your device, you can open it from the folder from a uh, gallery. Uh, if you are, I, I don't think that this actually allows you to take a, a shot on this own. I have never tried it before. But usually I will load the photo inside here. Uh, it obviously will recognize uh, iCloud photos. So if you have both selfies that you taken on iCloud already, you can actually use your iCloud photos and load it inside here. Alright, <clears throat> this should be automatic, it should automatically detect the face. Obviously, nothing is foolproof. Huh? I mean, uh, I've read on the user forums before that there are cases whereby the app fails to recognize a face. Okay, um, so if, we, if you do run into the problem right now, I'll say just use a different photo so for the whole purpose of practicing. Okay, so you should get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven points here. Okay, and um, everybody okay? Okay, so those who want to uh, follow along, so just load in your photos. So you notice that if I click on the face, right? This now, I, what I did was I, I clicked on the uh, his camera camera right, okay, right uh, cheekbone, and you can see that four options now appear. You can do face distortion. We can do with jawline and chin. Okay. Now bear in mind here, okay, that only three points have been selected. So that gives you the idea that right that since we are missing four points, the other four points also does something. Okay. This is the first mistake that I made when I was first started using this app. That I thought these are the only four options that are available. No, there are actually a lot more options that's available here. I'll show you guys later. Okay. But since we are over at this point here, we'll deal with this first. Okay. Now we can start with. I'm gonna, not going to start with face distortion. I'm going to start with width. Okay. So I'm going to click a width here. You can see that the, when I click a width, right, a little slider actually appears. Okay, so this is the whole interface of um, Adobe Photoshop fix. That is, everything is all slider based, either up, down, or left, right. Okay, there is no mouse, no, no scroll, no nothing. So now, on with right, notice that it actually recognizes 
like this is space. And if I can make him chubbier, and I can make him thinner. So if he put on a little bit of weight, right, I can sort of like make him see. Now like this looks like he lost a bit of weight now. <laughs> okay? And his jawline, now why does it got quite a pronounced jawline? So we can actually shift his jawline as well. You can the jawline right allows you to shift like this and like this. Like that. Make him lose a little bit of uh, he looks like 20 years younger now. <laughs> okay, and then the last one is the chin. Okay? And then the chin, it allows you to move up and down. Now this one I don't suggest you move too much, okay? If you move the chin, a person right is kind of defined by this area, this area, this area, and then this is the ear to your, your cheekbones. If you move the chin too much, right, people will think that you went for plastic surgery, okay? You went to Korea or something and came back with a plastic surgery. So try not to move the chin too much, right? You're gonna move, you know, I, I'm not you're not even gonna move a lot, right? I'm just gonna let it leave it the way it is. Now, at any point of time, if you felt that you made a mistake and you want to change, now if you look up to the top, right? top right hand corner where next to the question mark there is actually an undo okay you can actually undo it whatever that you don't want to uh, if you feel that you made a mistake you can go ahead and undo it all right okay uh, now we get to the now we're done with jawline and chin uh, let's get to the last one okay now the last one right is actually face distortion Now, what face distortion, right? If you click on the same thing, okay? Now, what this actually does, right, is that I'm sure you've heard of the term before if somebody has a very full face, or somebody has, um, or if somebody has a very, very underwhelming face. Now, if, if I feel that Linus has a very, very underwhelming face, I can make his face fuller by going this way here, like that. Okay? Or I can bring it down and make it a little bit more underwhelming. Like this, okay? So, I don't know, I think that. Linus actually has a very, very overwhelming face, but I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to like uh, make it go like that. Okay, there you go. Okay, so that is that is part one. Okay, that is that is part one of face. Okay, there are still two more things that you can actually do uh, with uh, with this face tool here. Now, notice that by default, right, you will always go to face. There are also other options here that you can actually choose, okay? We'll get to that, don't worry, okay? Now, what I want you to do now, right, is just click on face again, okay? Click on face again. When you click on face again, right, it basically disables the, the, the previous tool that allows us to change the width, the chin, uh, and the jawline, and it goes back to this. So what I want you to do now, right, is once we have these seven points back up again, you click on any one of the eye, one of the two eyes. Notice that we have four more options now. Why don't we click on the eye? Because some people tend to look a bit squinty when they're taking photos, now you can adjust not just the size, the tilt, the height, but also the width, okay? So those of you who like to have that whole Angela baby, uh, uh, kawaii kind of look, you know, you can finally have your nice big eyes, you know, uh, even tilt the direction of your eyes. So if you click on size, you can see that I can make Linus's eyes bigger, okay? Uh, both eyes will go up and down and together at the same time. Huh? Okay, so you make his eyes bigger. Uh, we can also can also change the tilt of his eyes. Make it tilt inwards, make it tilt outwards. Okay. Then uh, the height of the eyes. So this height of the eye doesn't make it go bigger or smaller. All it does is that it changes the position of the eye. You can make it go higher like this, like as if he's very surprised or very disappointed. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the width of the eyes will be the distance between the bridge to the eye. So you can actually go like this, like this. Okay. We're not gonna mess up with you. Now, usually eye is the thing that we recognize the most of a person. So we're not gonna go too crazy. I'm just gonna like make it look, try to look as normal as possible. Now, that's eyes. Okay. So whenever you finish something and you want to change something else on the face, you can still click on face again. You can see that every time, the way to remember is if you want to change something else, just click on face again. You click face again, you go back to the seven points. The seven points is where you want to be if you want to change something, okay? So, I can click on the nose. You can see the nose, well, most people are concerned about the nose is how big the nose is, right? Big nose with small nose. So, we can click on this and see that we can make the nose bigger. We can make the nose smaller here, like this, okay? Yeah, that's what the nose does. 
can who knows only got one option. Uh, I mean, that's, I don't think anyone wants to have a crooked nose. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the width is the only thing that we can actually control. But if you do want a crooked nose, I can show you something that you can do later. Uh, I'm going to go back to face. Okay. Now the last one, right, will be the mouth. Look at uh, this is the one that I like the most. Okay. So it's like if someone's not smiling, you can force him to smile. If someone is smiling too much, you can force him to smile less. Okay. So. For example, right, and look at this, you even have upper lip and lower lip control. So if that person, you know, has some kind of a stiff upper lip, you know, you can try to fix that problem as well. Like if Linus, I feel that Linus is not smiling enough, I can, hey, Linus, let's smile. Yeah. <laughs> smile more. Smile more. <laughs> say, not wide enough, you know, let's make it a wider smile. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and if I feel that his upper lip and his lower lip need some kind of a adjustment, I can make it go up, down like that. Yeah. It's like talking. Right? <laughs> yeah. So maybe we can make it go like that, and the lower lip maybe we can maybe go up a bit or down a bit. No. Like that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So yeah. <clears throat> but I'm sure that. It has ever, you know, when you take group photos, right, it is, it is one of the, the nastiest things to do because it's like, it's very difficult to get everybody to smile, everybody not to squeeze, everybody to be perfect at the one moment, okay, so this is your solution. Okay, now that we've done this, uh, yeah, I'm going to apologize for like this, we're not done with you yet, <laughs> okay, there's, there's more, more to be done with this, okay. So, uh, this is the seven points, so remember, it's the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the cheekbones and, and jawline that can be adjusted. Now, if you're still not happy with it, like let's say for example, you still want to look slimmer or you still want to look, uh, you still want to do some adjustments to your face, uh, you can click on walk, okay? Now, when you click on walk, right, you will see that uh, there are two things that will appear on the left. Number one is size and number two is the grid, okay? Now, I'm not going to talk about the grid first, but I'm going to talk about size. Now, size, right, if you guys have ever used the Liquify tool in uh, Photoshop before, you know that it's a brush that allows you to, to bend and distort stuff. Okay. So the size here of this, you have to hold down the, this button here and drag it up and down. So I'm going to make it maybe the size uh, around like this, about 6.5. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to this area here and I'm just going to kind of like uh, twist his cheeks in a bit more like that. Okay, so you can see here, I'm actually pushing it in, and I'm actually pushing his face in here a bit like that. I'm not going to do too much to it, okay, but I'm just pushing pushing the edges of his jawline in. <laughs> okay, he's looking a bit funny now, so I'm going to undo the last action. Okay. Just a tiny little bit of it. Okay, if you want to, if you want to see what you've done, right? Uh, all you have to do is just go and click on this button at the bottom here. You can see what I've done is that you can see how the grids are bending. So that's what I've done. I've squished in that part there. Okay. Uh, if you want to know what are the pixels that has been affected, uh, that's those are the areas. If you see the line bending, it means that some of the pixels has been pushed and distorted. Okay. So if you want to get rid of this, simply press the grid again, and the grid will disappear. Okay. Um, there are a few more things that we can actually do. Okay, we've got this thing here called swell. Okay, uh, swell is swell will make something bulge up in size. Okay, typically we will use this for something like eyes uh, or on uh, or nose if you want to make the eyes bigger. But obviously we already made the eyes bigger. But just to demonstrate how this actually works, I'm going to reduce this to maybe the size of this is eyes. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of like click inside here. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna just drag it across the row. You can see here what it does is that it makes it bulge up, it makes it bulge down like this. And I can click here and drag it to the right or drag it to the left. That way I can make his eyes bigger and smaller. Okay. Like you know like sometimes when people smile, you know, like I mean it's like just once uh, Maybe not intentionally, one eye go bigger than the other, you know, then we can fix that problem here. Look at that, both the eyes the same size now. Okay? Right? And uh, last but not least, uh, we're going to go to 
Tuo. Okay, Tuo. Now Tuo is actually quite interesting. Okay, um, Tuo actually, if you look at the pattern that we have on Tuo, that is actually exactly what it does. So you imagine something like your little toilet drain and you see the water going down. That is the kind of uh, direction that your pixel will be going. It kind of swishes around and pulls around in a circular pattern. So let's say I'm just going to make this size a little bit smaller. Let's say I find that like, this mouse is a little bit crooked. I'm just going to click here. Now, this one here is a little bit funny. Uh, I don't know if this is the right way of doing it. I tried moving it left and right, and it doesn't really work so well. But I find that the best way to make this work right is to actually go with a circular pattern. This way and this way. It actually uh, 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 recognizes the direction that it's actually turning. So let's say I wanted to turn anti-clockwise. I just turn this way. Look at that. I straighten up the smile here. Okay. So I don't know how many of you managed to download it to try it, okay? But um, if you did manage to download it in time, uh, I think about you know when because we are doing two different softwares, okay? When we finish the software, we will take a break, okay? Then hopefully that will allow you guys to also download it. Those who haven't finished downloading, then the second session we will not second same second session today, yeah. Uh, okay, we take a five minute break for people to go to the toilet, and then we will come back and we will do full. Mix. Okay. Now, what is the reconstruct tool here? Now, the reconstruct tool, right? What it does is that it simply uh, restores. Let's say, for example, if you feel that you've done too much in one area, let's say I feel like I did too much for the eyes, I can simply come over here, reduce the size, and I just try to restore a little bit of the eye here and restore a little bit of the eye here. You know, I feel that I feel that lightness doesn't look the same. You know, if you try to mess with his eyes. So, so what we have now is back to his original eye from the original photo. Okay, so that's what reconstruct actually does. Okay, so once you're done with this, you're happy with this, you can just go ahead and click the on the uh, tick button, and then I'm guessing that this is going to take a while to save. But actually, it's quite fast. Okay, when I did it this afternoon, it was like it took a while. So we have one plus adjust liquify. Okay, we now don't worry. We the rest of it is uh, it's going to be a lot faster. Okay, it doesn't take as long as this. So I'm going to go over the healing. Now, again, you will see some very familiar friends here. You will see spot healing, spot healing two. You will see uh, close them two. You will see a uh, fixed red eye, and you will see restore. Now the last icon, right? Usually you see restore, reconstruct. It always does the same thing. You will basically restore the original pixels of the photo. So no matter what it, they call it, right? It's, it always does the same thing. Okay. So maybe now. This is the best part about using a tablet or any touch device to do spot healing. You can do this. And, uh, although you can do this on a PC too, uh, but I can just zoom right in to the area, the problem area. So, oops, that's not what I meant to do. So you can actually, now I'm on spot healing. So you can pick an area right that you feel that has a problem, and then Photoshop will try to replace it with the most appropriate pixels. Like for example, maybe I want to fix this point here. Uh, not so good, I'm going to just undo it. Maybe I'll try to fix this area here. There we go, it's not so bad that I managed to get it fixed. So this tool right, works if you do small little dabs. I don't feel that it works very well if you try to be too greedy and go like big, large areas. It tends to fail. Uh, let's say I do a small area here. There you go. Little blemish here, fixed. Little blemish here, fixed. Little blemish here, fixed. You can just slowly go on and on and just try to like fix this problem, you know. Okay, fix small little blemishes on minus is fixed. Okay. Let's say for example like this big area, right? You can try to fix this big area. I doubt that you will be able to fix this big area here. Look at that. It did a really, really horrible job. You can try to fix this big area here. But never fret, okay? Because it didn't manage to fix this area right, the next tool next to it is a very, very useful tool. Now, how this patch tool actually works, right, is that notice that the moment I click patch. It circles the area that I previously highlighted. Okay, so patch right by default is not selected. It's actually deselected. You can't choose patch if you don't select an area. You need to select an area first, then choose patch. That's how it works. Okay, so with that selected, I can now drag around and try to find an area of the skin that will work well for Linus's face. So maybe I'm just gonna drag it over here. I'm just trying to find an area that is nice and easy for you to fix. 
maybe somewhere. Uh, oops, I'm just going to do that. Not so good. Okay, uh, let's try to patch it again. Okay, okay. let's just. Uh, okay, we need to choose a spot here first. Select this area. Okay, once you select this area, then we're just going to use patch, and then we're going to drag it around. Okay, hopefully, I mean, we, we may not necessarily always find a spot that is very, very conducive right now. I'm just going to try my best. Okay. Uh, and sometimes if it still has a little bit of problem, right, you can still, still use the spot heal and just try to heal around the edges here. Okay. I'm not doing such a hot job now. But okay. Uh, if you find that there is a problem with small areas, the third tool here is the close stand tool. Okay. So the clone stamp tool is different from the spot heal tool in the sense that you need to do two actions. Okay? You need to first select the area that you want to clone from, let's say for example here. Okay, and now I'm gonna reduce the size a little bit more. Okay, this is a little bit big. And I'm gonna reduce the hardness here. Okay, so I'm gonna say uh, clone from here, and then I'm going to clone over in this area here. Okay, so I'm just copying the pixels up here to the top. Okay, so let's say clone from here. And then I'm gonna pull over uh, this side here. This brush over this area here, like that. Okay, so pull from here, and then brush over this area here. Okay, so I'm just trying to match the color so that you can actually, uh, or maybe we can pull from some area here and pull over this area here. Sometimes I feel that you know, if you just kind of like use a few steps, it might help. I'm just going to go around this a little bit. Okay. Sorry about this. <laughs> I'm making a mess out of this. <laughs> okay. So obviously not all areas work uh, as well as we, we want it to be. Okay. So, um, so I mean, worst case scenario, we we'll just restore, and then we will paint over this area. There you go, it's restored. Okay, it's easy as that. Whenever you feel that you are dejected and you want to start all over, just restore the area and start all over again. Okay, right. So the last one here is the fixed red eye. Now, obviously, we had no red eye problem, but I'm sure you guys have come across red eye problem. You know, person's not ready. You take a photo. You know, the iris is like wide open. And then it bounces right back from the back of the eye, come back out, you get bloodshot eyes. Okay, and this is where the red eye goes. Well, because we have no photos here to demonstrate it, so I'm just going to skip this one here. But in case you want to use it, you can just it's a simply it's as simple as just choosing the size and hardness. Oh, oh actually, sorry, my bad. It's actually an automatic detection. Now, because it didn't, it, it managed to detect where Linus's eyes are, and it didn't detect any red inside there, so it gives me an error message. Okay, so you don't actually have to click anything inside there at all. You know, it just automatically cleans up the red eye. And once you're done with that, just go ahead and click on the tick, and there you go. We are back on this. Now, the rest of it, right? You know, are pretty straightforward. I don't find them extremely useful. Like for example, the smooth here. Okay, uh, the smooth, right? If you have used Photoshop before. The smooth is like one of the worst tools that you want to use. It doesn't actually smooth out things nicely at all. Like for example, right now, I'm just going to adjust the size here like that, and I'm going to choose the hardness really, really low. And I'm also going to kind of drop the opacity a little bit, so I could like try to smooth out this area here of his face. Okay, you can see that it doesn't actually do a very, very good job. You know, it's not, it's not really the best tool that you want to use. Uh, sharpen, also probably not the best tool that you want to use. Like for example, if I use sharpen, right, you can see that if I try to sharpen any area here, it doesn't really do any, um, I mean, this, this, the skin sharpening, it doesn't actually create a real, a very realistic looking kind of sharpness. Okay, so I'm just going to use the restore brush to restore the skin back to the way that it was. But the left side, you can, if I were to choose between the two, I would say smooth works a little bit better than sharpen. Okay. So, and which is why I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this because uh, honestly, I don't think that you guys would spend a lot of time using smooth and sharpen. Uh, light is good. I like light because light 
actually allows you to, let's say for example, we want to give lighters a more dramatic look, you know, we want him to have kind of like a split lighting, one side dark, one side bright, you know, we want to have the kind of split lighting. So let's say left side a bit brighter, okay. So I'm going to choose lighten, uh, and I'm going to choose the size, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, nice and soft, uh, opacity, a little bit low. So I'm just going to paint over the left side of uh, Linus's face, make it a little bit brighter, size a little bit more. There you go. And then I'm going to go to darken, which is the complete opposite. Okay, make it nice and big, nice and lower. And I'm just going to darken up the other side of his face like that, so that we get a nice and split lighting going on here. Okay, and a two face. So, yeah, if you all know why this has two sides to him. <laughs> Okay, if you feel that you went too much, you can also restore. Now, one thing I do like about the restore, right, is that you don't necessarily need to restore 100%. Let's say you feel that, yeah, I kind of like the look, but I kind of went a little bit too heavy, too over. I can drop the opacity of this to something like maybe very, very low, like maybe like 29, 25%, and I'm just going to paint over the whole thing. So what it does now, right, is that it basically restores him, but not 100%. It restores 25% of him, okay? So we still have the whole split lightning effect, but you know, less intense. If I still feel that it's too intense, I can go over here one more time. And then it reduces it by another 25%. Okay, make sense? Now, uh, I know a lot of people will probably be thinking, okay, we got this new thing here called structure. What the hell is structure? Well, what structure actually does, right, is that because if you lighten and darken, you're starting to affect the levels a lot. Some things may become too bright, some things may become too dark. So it basically adjusts the overall brightness and just even things out a little bit. Okay, I can show you what it does for this picture. I'm just going to choose structure. You can see that it's spinning around a bit. Yeah, just kind of like tidies up the, the brightness and darkness level a little bit more. And there we go. We got a little bit more structure to the lighting now. Okay? Right, now that I'm happy with it, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. You see it spins around a bit. I'm actually happy that this iPad hasn't crashed to this, at this point in time because this morning it did a lot of crashing to me. Um, this tool, like color and paint, okay. Oh, by the way, you know, if you are using, uh, oh, no, 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 sorry, my bad. Uh, now, now this is uh, color, okay. So you can choose to saturate certain areas of his face. For example, if I'm choosing saturate, I'm going to make this a little bit higher. Uh, I'm not actually going to do this because I think that it's a stupid idea to do it to, to a face. Opacity, let's just make it really high just for demonstration purposes. So if I were to paint over his face, you can see that now he's got a very, very nice orange face now. Okay, I'm going to undo it because that's not what we want. And we can probably also be, now this is probably the one that I use more. Because you know how some, okay, maybe not for a portrait photo. Let's say I find that his yellow shirt is like really, really over the top. I kind of wish that the yellow is less saturated. Okay, so I can take this and I can just kind of brush it over the saturation of the shirt. Oh, it's probably a little bit too much, so I'm gonna just undo it, uh, take down the opacity even more, and maybe the size more. I'm just gonna like kind of paint over here over his shirt. Yeah, so you can see that his shirt is a little bit less saturated now. Okay, less yellow. Okay. So you, I tend to use desaturate and saturate. You, know, you very rarely do we want to kind of like have this spot, which is like a lot more saturated. Okay, and as usual, we have restore, and we have something here called pop. Okay, now pop right is almost exactly identical to structure. It does what it does to brightness, to color. Because as you know, sometimes color, some color may become too light, some color might become too too saturated. But in this case, right, it's, it's probably a bad idea to use pop because you even up everything for me, and then the yellow will become like very very bright again. So that's not what I want to do. Okay. But just to let you know, you have that option, option over there, okay? I'm going to click OK. Now you may be asking, you know, why do we have to go through so many different steps to do all this? Now, don't forget, this is still a tablet device, and a very, very old tablet device. And the fact that they need to split all these apps right, into Photoshop Mix, Photoshop Fix, and then there's also Photoshop Sketch, it kind of gives you the idea that, you know, the, the uh, mobile devices are not really ready to handle uh, software as big as Photoshop, no way you can. So the way they try to solve this problem, try to split all the different processes, all the different tools that you need to use into different into different apps. Okay, if you look at the app store now, right, well, there's pro there's a ton of Adobe uh, softwares out there. Some more useful than the others, you know, some not very very useful at all. 
Um, they are, I guess they are really, really going into this area now. Okay, the, the next one we're going to do is paint. So if you want to put some face paint on uh, on uh, Linus, you can. Or what, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some foundation for him. Okay, So I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to pick a very neutral area of his face, let's say somewhere along the cheek area here. So you can see that he has chosen a very nice skin color for Linus. You can see that this is like a foundation padding here. Okay, So what you can do right is, you can, now that I pick the color, you can pick the size of your foundation pad. And then you can also pick the hardness. So I'm gonna pick like maybe like that. And opacity is important. You don't want to kind of go too crazy. If I go on 100 and I start painting over him, you know, he's gonna look very, very funny. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna do this now. And okay, let me just pick the color first. Okay, pick color. And he's gonna pick the color here or like that. The color. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And I'm just gonna go on 100. Okay, size here. If I start painting over here, oh, uh, my bad. What happened? Because I forgot to change it. I'm gonna see our pink color. Okay, that's the mistake that I made. All right, so I'm gonna do it. Okay, make sure that when you pick color, pick a color first. Okay, and then go over to paint. If you start to paint over him like this, okay, you will start. Okay, the opacity is a little bit low. So if I start to go high, right? If I start to paint over him, you can see that his eyes are starting to turn uh, orange as well. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to undo it. So you want to be very, very careful with the opacity. You want to kind of go down a little bit more. You might want to zoom in a lot more as well. So if you want to kind of like put a little bit of foundation on him, you can. Just be careful. Don't go too crazy on it. I'm just going to brush over the top here. Okay. Um, okay. Put a little bit of foundation here. Put a little bit of foundation here. Okay, there we go. I'm not going to go too crazy on it. Okay, now it looks a little bit more made up. All right? Um, you can see that on over here the blend option is actually turned on. Okay, if you do not blend, you can see that oh, he kind of looks like that now. That's the foundation that I applied on him. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have blend turned on so that it blends nicely into the skin. Okay, so that it looks more like makeup and less like face paint. Of course, if you want to draw face paint like Ultimate Warrior on him, you, know, you can. You know, just turn off the blend and paint red and green onto him. You can. Okay. So now that I've done this, I'm happy. I'm going to say okay, and there you go. Okay, and just one, one or two more things that we need to do before we take a break. Okay, now I'm going to go on defocus over here. Now defocusing, right? Uh, is a very, very simple thing that we need, that, that it does. All you need to do is just you can see that all the tools are exactly the same. You choose the size, you choose this, and this one. What it does is I'm going to keep it relatively small in this case. Uh, is that you can defocus certain areas of his body. Let's say, for example, the ears, I want it to be a bit out of focus over here. There we go. So you've got a bit of out of focus here. Kind of bring attention more to his eyes. Okay. If I zoom in here, you can actually see that his, uh, his ears are a little bit out of focus now. Okay. So I don't want to do it uh, too much. I'm just going to say okay. Okay. So you can see it's always the same. You do it, you come up, you press okay, you come up, and same thing for the Vinyan as well. Okay. I'm going to choose a vignette. Vignette takes a while to load, okay? Now, if you guys know what a vignette is, a vignette, right, is the darkening of the edges, top edges and bottom edges, due to the, the lens. Usually very, very wide lenses, not enough light can kind of come in by the side. So, I can actually darken, so I can pull this, make this a little bit bigger or smaller, you can see that it will update. Uh, now, you need to drag this little slider here up and down. You can see that now, I can make him like this, or I can make so I can just darken it a little bit so that the bottom part of the shirt gets a little bit of vignetting, okay? Um, yeah, the color by default we want it to be black. You know, it doesn't really make sense to use any other color other than black. Sometimes we use white, okay? But I'm just going to use black, okay? So I'm going to go click OK, and voila! There we go. We got a nice uh, picture of Linus now, okay? <laughs> and uh, so we've done this. So how are we going to export the photo? Okay, to export a photo, if you look up to the top, there's this square with the little arrow going up. You click that, and you can see what are the options that we have. Number one, save the camera roll. So obviously, if you want to save it for the phone, you want it to keep it on the phone only, you can do that, so that you can still show your friends. Uh, you can show, send it to Photoshop CC. Uh, okay, I think in, in, in view of time, and I'm actually not going to do that, okay? Uh, but I'm going to tell you what happens, okay? If you send it to Photoshop CC, you will upload it onto the uh, you will upload it onto the Creative Cloud account, okay? That you get 
with your uh, uh, if you if you have an Adobe Creative Suite membership, you will upload there, and then if you have Photoshop open already on your machine, it will just bam open it on Photoshop right away. Okay, so you can start doing it for if there are some things like adding text that you can't do on this machine here, this doesn't allow you to add text. You can just do it straight away on your machine here. Okay, you can post it to Instagram or Facebook or Behance straight away. Uh, or just simply save it to your Creative Cloud library here, okay? Or save it to library. Any questions that we have so far? Any anything anything that you might be thinking about whether or not you can do that, and you know you are unsure about that? Uh, anything? If nothing, then I assume that I'm doing a pretty good presentation so far. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is still Photoshop mix to go. Okay, Photoshop mix will be a lot quicker. Okay. Uh, it shouldn't take up too much time. So let's take a five minute break. I think that you guys uh, uh, might need to, uh, some of you may need to freshen up a bit. Let's take a five minute toilet break. We will resume in five minutes. Why does you want this photo? <laughs>
Uh, anybody don't have a piece of paper? Uh, you still need a piece of paper. You need a piece of paper? Uh, unless you still have a paper for all of your work. Okay, the reason why I, I have a piece of paper right, is, okay, here's the good news. For those of you on Android devices, right, you can now, you, you can now participate uh, because there is actually an Android. Uh, there is a Photoshop mix for Android. But that is, that is only part of the good news. Uh. The bad news is that there's limited functionality for, uh, for the, uh, the, the Android version. Okay? But Adobe has promised to release a Photoshop fix for Android. They are working on it. It will be released soon. And they will come up to date with the Photoshop mix, right? The Android version that you're using was originally how it came up. When it came up, it was all on par. Apple and Android was all the same. Uh, but then somehow Apple jumped ahead first uh, with the newer releases. Uh, Adobe had jumped ahead with the later rele uh, early releases. So Photoshop Mix, you can see this this is the logo here. I'm gonna fire it up. The reason why I gave you guys a piece of paper is so that uh, we can perform. You can take some photos against a white background. Uh, if you don't know what Photoshop Mix actually does, right, is that the difference between Mix and Fix, right, is that Fix is something for you to fix your photo, like fix blemishes, fix the eye, fix the bulge, fix the brightness, contrast, crop, all this. Uh, although there are certain similarities, very, very few similarities, uh, Photoshop uh, Mix is really more of a compositing tool. When I say compositing, I mean you put one thing against another. It's like you don't have money, to, if you don't have money to go on holiday to go to Paris, so you cut yourself out and put yourself against the Eiffel Tower. That is composing, that is mix. Okay. Uh, so, as usual, they will have some examples for you here already. Uh, I'm going to press the plus button here. So, as usual, right, you know, okay, so for the, uh, actually, this is a very, the, I actually have the example, but my friend actually sent it to me. So, I'm going to show you guys that the end result here. Okay, so this is the, the what we did in the office, in my office today. Uh. So my friend was saying, hey, my mom is not smiling. See the photo on the right, she's not really smiling. Of course, we didn't want to go too crazy uh, to the point where why she doesn't look real anymore. So we make the eye a little bit bigger and make her smile a little bit more. Okay, so a real life example of, uh, and this one he did it himself, I didn't, I didn't do it for him. Okay, so he picked up the whole, the whole, uh, the whole thing right within a few seconds. Okay, I'm going to go back to Photoshop Mix again. So I'm going to go to old photos. Oh, it's getting a bit cold here. Even the presenter is feeling cold. Usually the presenter don't feel cold. <laughs> Even the presenter is feeling cold. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to start off right with this wooden block over here. Okay, so you can use any photo for your phone. If you want to find a picture like this, a very simple, I didn't take a photo of this. I downloaded this from Google Photos. Okay, just do a Google image search, find, do a search on whatever background, and just uh, edit it here. So what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use this right as my base, okay? So I'm gonna like just cut stuff out and then put it down here, like what we'll do in the product shoot, okay? So as usual, we can crop also, okay, if you crop, that allows you to do your standard crop. Uh, you can flip. Now I'm not gonna actually gonna do that because I want to keep the entire size of the whole thing. Now I'm not gonna go through this all over again because this is almost exactly the same thing as we have in Photoshop uh, fix. So uh, adjust also very very similar. You can see that we can adjust things like exposure, uh, contrast, highlight, shadow. So. Basically, this entire, almost this entire uh, panel, right, is exactly the same as uh, Photoshop uh, Fix. Uh, the only thing that it doesn't have is this thing called Auto Fix, which it basically guesses the the brightness and contrast of everything and gives it a slightly better rendition of the photo based on uh, its own calculation. So it's like an automatic. Uh, setting kind of thing. But I don't really like how it looks, so I'm going to undo it. And I'm going to get out of it. I'm not going to actually going to accept the settings. Now, let's get to the part where it's different from Photoshop Fix. Okay, so obviously we don't want to be doing the same thing as what we did in Photoshop Fix. Now, this thing here is called Looks. Okay, now Looks, right, anybody who used Instagram, uh, who, uh, who uh, uses most photography software that uh, 
apps that you have on your phone will probably be uh, familiar with things like this. Like it will give you, let's say, for example, an uh, ashen kind of look, more black and white. Okay, uh, or you can give it. I can give it a little bit more of, let's say, uh, a cold fade like this. Okay, so you can choose any kind of a. Uh, uh, any kind of a, a pen that you want. Oh, actually, right, you know, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to show you something here, how, how this actually works. Okay, I'm going to actually go, go back here. I'm sorry, I am actually forgot right there. I actually put that in a different photo. So I'm just going to go back here for a second. We get back to this. So maybe I'll take this opportunity to show you guys. Now, I go back, and you notice that this, right, actually gets saved as a project. It says here, new composition, because I didn't give it a name. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea, right, that I can actually save multiple projects inside here, just like Photoshop. Okay, so I've saved this, and this is now one project. So if I want to start another project, I can just simply press plus, and then now it asks me to choose another photo to start again. Okay, and this time around, I'm going to start off with this guy here. Okay, so maybe what you can do is you can start off with any kind of photo that you have on your phone. Okay, and uh, now, why I want to choose this guy here, right, is because if I go over to looks now, okay, and this time round, right, I'm going to choose, now uh, what is the one that I wanted to choose? Uh, portrait, I think. Yeah, if I choose portrait, it will turn this entire picture uh, black and white. Now this is a picture of a homeless guy that I took when I was in the US. He was nice enough to pose uh, for me. So I feel that, well, it's nice, but it would be nice, right, to maintain the yellow color uh, thing that he's holding. So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to make it black and white, but I'm going to uh, just mask out the area around here, around the thing that he's holding, so that that becomes yellow, okay? So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Oops. I'm going to do that. Uh, do that again. Um, okay, sometimes this... Okay, this is not the best uh, feature uh, of this. Okay, I, I sometimes... I had a lot of problem with this uh, whenever I use it. Okay, now it's spinning round and round. Now. We have to try to crash this off right now. <laughs> so it's finally crashed. Okay, let me just let me just crash this. Let me crash this. Let's go back to full shot next game. I think I know what the problem. I think I know what the problem is. The problem is always when I try to use uh, the, the smart brush, I, and I, I was just trying to show this the problems when you face. Okay, so what I did just now was I went to looks, and I went to choose portrait. Okay. So that should turn this black and white. You notice that there's a smart brush at the corner here, at the bottom right hand corner. So I'm actually going to turn this off, okay? I'm going to change this from smart brush to a basic brush, okay? Because I realize that a smart brush always causes a bit of a problem, okay? So now I change this to basic, right? You notice that on the left, there is add and there is also subtract, okay? So if I click on add, right, it will become subtract. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to subtract the filter from this picture here, okay? So I'm going to use my I'm just going to use my finger and just kind of paint along this area here. Uh, you can see that now, okay, it doesn't look very, very well. Okay, what an easier way, right? Okay, I know that this is not supposed to work this way. I'm just going to paint the whole thing, make it black and white. <laughs> okay, then now I'm going to subtract from this area. Sometimes it's just this happen, you know, and then I have to do it the long way. Okay, I'm just going to subtract this, okay, and just paint the mask around here. Now, I know that I didn't do such a hard job, okay, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit more. Now you can also add back, okay? So if you want to add back, you can change the brush size a little bit smaller. I'm just going to add back here. Okay, on the fingers. And I'm just going to add it. Around here. Around here. Okay, just want to keep the yellow part. I think I started with too much, too big a brush. But it's okay, you know, you can always add, you can always subtract, 
There was an ant bag, a subtract bag. And I'm just trying to get this to work from the right way. Okay, it takes a bit of work, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to to show you guys that you can apply a filter and you can actually selectively select which part of the picture that you want to be affected with the filter. Okay, I'm not a big Instagram guy, so I don't know if uh, Instagram can do stuff like that. Okay, but I'm just going to go backwards. Okay, I'm sorry if this crashes a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to go back to this composition here again. Okay, okay we've only got about, about 10, 20 minutes left, so hopefully we can finish this in time. Uh, now, this is the background that I was uh, that I was using. Now, the reason why I gave you guys the white paper right now, you will finally get to use the white paper and put it to, to good use, okay? So, if you notice that on the right, there is actually this thing here uh, with a plus sign on it, okay? If you don't see it, what you can do is you can click on the, the little layer thing up there. You see next to the, to the undo, there's a layer thing. If you don't see it, you can click on this. You can see that when I click it, it disappears. When I click on it again, now it appears, okay? This is your add layer function, okay? It's just like adding a layer in your Photoshop layers. So I can press plus, and plus, and then it asks me to choose another picture, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, right, is I'm gonna choose this picture here. Now, this is a picture I took earlier today. It's actually my necklace here, okay? So what I did was, I took it on a white piece of paper, if it asks you to resize canvas, you just say cancel. Because if you say resize, right, you will make it the size of this picture, which is actually bigger. And I don't want it to be that big, so I'm just going to click cancel, it will fix it. So, uh, yeah, so I did exactly uh, what I was asking you to do. You can try to put it on a piece of paper. Now, my advice for you is to try to use flash, okay? Because if you, because if you hold this over, the lights on top, it's going to be quite shadowy. So use flash, uh, so that it bounces against the white. And you can see that even by using flash, right, it's still quite dark, okay? so. Because it's still quite dark, right, what I'm going to do is follow this layer. Now, how do you know, now that when you have multiple layers, right, it becomes, becomes a problem because when I say if I crop or if I adjust, right, I don't know which layer am I adjusting. So if I, now, the, how you know, right, is by looking on the right, you can see that now the necklace is being highlighted. If I click on this, then the background is being highlighted. If I click on this, the necklace is being highlighted, okay? So, I can go ahead and just go to this uh, fourth option here called cutout. Okay, when I click on cut out, right, you will just basically focus on the necklace itself. Okay, now this is the best tool. Now every one of these apps, right, have the best tool. And this, I feel, is the best tool that uh, Photoshop Mix actually has. Now this time around, right, I'm going to keep it on the smart tool. Okay, I'm going to keep it on smart. Uh, because as usual, they always have a smart and they have a basic option. Because the smart, right, actually, I think that it is actually very, very smart. I can... Uh, I can go around and cancel out uh, the, the background here. But before I do that, right, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this uh, first. Because I feel that the, the picture is a little bit too dark. So, I'm going to go to exposure. And I'm going to increase the exposure all the way up. Okay. So by increasing the exposure all the way up, right, you can see that now, the whole background is all white now. Okay. Now that makes it a lot easier for me to cut. Okay, because now I can go to cut up now, which is where I was going in just now. And using the smart brush that I have here, you can see that now you have an option to add, or they always have an option to add or subtract. Okay, so I'm going to put subtract here, which means to say I'm going to cut away, and I'm going to cut away this area here. You can see that it actually cuts. I just swipe a few, I didn't even go anywhere close to the necklace. You can actually detect the edge and get rid of that white area for me. And I'm just going to brush around this area here, you can see, it's got brush around here, see, it's got brush around here, it's got brush around here, it's got, there you go, ta-da, cut off. Okay, now, this is really good, right, when you have a white background, but when you don't have a white background, it gets a bit tricky. Like, if I want to remove this leather part here, right, if I start to, to do this, right, it might start to cut away too much of it. Okay, and my, I might run this and see, ah, oh, yeah, it's gone, okay? So, I might end up with a little bit of a problem. So if you find that that is a problem, okay, let's wait for this. Dear readers, the library will be closing in 30 minutes. If you wish to borrow library materials, we advise you to do so now at our self-check machine. Thank you for joining us for the Library 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 Library
So if you run into this problem where the last bit I cannot remove, I can change from smart to basic. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more so that I'm a bit more precise. Now, don't be, you don't have to be a keyhole surgeon. Okay, you 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 can zoom. Right, whenever you detect two finger, you will zoom. So I can just basically brush away this area manually. Okay, this side looks like ah, actually this part here looks kind of off, so I'm just going to brush away this part here as well. So you can choose where you want to kind of move it away to. Double finger allows you to move it up and down and zoom. Maybe what I'll do is I'll also just get a little bit of like that, okay? A little, not very clean, but just gonna eyeball it. Okay, if you, I made a mistake with this area here, so I'm just going to add back, just add back this area here like that, okay? Uh, a little bit too much. Subtract that as well. Okay? Alright, it's not perfect, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. So you can see here, now, what we have here is, uh, just gonna zoom out. Oh, so here's a here's the thing you can do with it. See now, because I'm on a layer, I can zoom, I can scale it up and down now. Okay? I can even turn it using two fingers, left and right. Look at that. And if I want to zoom outside, I can click uh, to a neutral area and just zoom the whole thing down. Okay. So you control it by looking at this blue area. If I select this one here, I can scale it up and I can turn it. If I select the background, I can also... Now, I don't want to scale the background, so obviously I'm not going to choose it. Okay, but you can select the background and scale and do whatever you want to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, right, is that I'm going to put this here. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, now, this is... Now, for those of you who are on the Android device, you will probably not see another plus sign here anymore. You cannot add any more layers. For the Android device, right, maximum you can go through layers. Okay, can't go any more than that. But for the Apple users, guess what? You can add some more. Okay, you can add. Uh, I never actually would try how many maximum layers you can actually add, but you can add quite a fair bit more layers. Okay, one more thing that the Android users don't get at this moment is everything from the right of cutoff. Okay, you don't have blend, you don't have upright, you don't have shake reduction, you don't have fill. Okay, now. Although it may seem like a good thing, guess what? Upright and shake, uh, and shake reduction, right, is a limited period free uh, function for you. After a certain period, right, you have to start paying for it. Okay, because because you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you how, if we have time, I'll show you how this works. Okay, but let me show you what blend can do first. Okay, I like blend a lot. Blend is actually kind of like the blend modes in your Photoshop. And, okay, there we go. So if you look at the bottom, right you will see that you have the normal things like multiply, darken, lighten, screen, overlay, soft light, difference. If you're a Photoshop user, you should be quite familiar with this. Let me show you what you can actually do with the, let's say, multiply. There you go. So you can see I've done multiply. I can, can I move it around? No, I can't move it around now. Actually, I should be able to move it around. I think that the iPad is slow, so I can't move it around now. But it's okay, I'm just gonna click OK, so that I can now, hopefully, move it around. Oh, wrong one. Okay, move this around so you can see that now it's actually blending with the background here, okay? Um, now, here's the best part as well. If you do one and you feel that, oh, that's very nice, I want one more of it. Well, you simply click on this and duplicate one more. And because for the Apple device, you can have more than one, look at that. I can create one more and put it here like that. I can create, click on this, duplicate one more, and move it across here like that. Now we have three. Okay? Um, okay, and let's say I want to add text, okay? Actually, I wanted to do a text demo where I will actually use this and send up to Photoshop, okay? But I think in interest of time, right, you know, we probably shouldn't do that. But I just need you guys to trust me that when you press this, you will actually go to your Photoshop if you have a Photoshop uh, CC account, okay? Or you can share it with your friends on any one of these uh, social media. Um, okay, just before I wrap up, okay, I, I, I think that this is really, really cool, uh, but I don't know if the network will actually allow me to do this. Let's see that my phone is still connected. And okay, it is still connected. Okay, that's good. Okay, because I have another device here. Uh, I have another photo here that I prepared. Now this photo fresh from the oven, I took it yesterday. I was, at, uh, I was conducting a photography lesson and uh, uh, the Marina Bay City Gallery, so I took this photo. Now, 
very common problem with these kind of photos, okay, is that the buildings are not straight. They are all kind of like slanted, sideways, tilted, okay, because using very wide lens. So there, this upright button actually comes in and comes in very, very handy. And, okay. So you can see that ah, it's uploading assets. Okay, so let me just take a while to explain to you guys what is actually happening here. Okay, what is actually happening is that the, the this whole function is not actually happening on your device. This is actually a very very handy function for, even for Photoshop. So, so for, uh, Adobe has come up with this very very ingenious way of charging you money. That is, we will send this up to the cloud. Somebody on the some automated function on the Adobe server will perform that filter for you, that function for you, and after we have done that, we will send it back down again to your device, and then presto, it's done. Okay, so, I, ah, there we go, it managed to upload. So, this is original, I'm going to show you version number one. There you go, it's straightened. Okay, version number two, like this, and version number three, like this. Okay, so obviously most people will choose version number two, you know, we will make do with a little bit of distortion, but we don't have to crop anything at all, okay? But if you still feel that that is a problem, you can go with this completely straight. But that would mean that we have to crop off quite a little bit of stuff, okay? I'm just gonna go, now you guys already know how to crop, so you can crop if you want to. Um, actually, you know what, I'm just gonna go with number one, just so that I can show you guys some stuff, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click OK now. So you can see that because I click OK now, now it's, we have a lot of blank space now. So I'm gonna need to crop, and I need to crop, in to here like so. I have a little bit of space on top so I can actually go up a little bit higher. And now I'm gonna leave this hole here deliberately. Okay, I'm gonna leave this hole here. Just so that I can actually show you guys some stuff later. Okay, so I managed to crop it. And which brings me to the very last one, okay, the, the fill function here. Now the fill function, right? Now because I have a hole here now, I need to fill up this hole. Okay, so this fill function works really, really well. Now, when I was trying this out, right, I realized that you cannot, this, the fill function, in, in a weird way, doesn't actually work on transparency. Okay, it needs to actually work on pixels. So that's weird, right? I mean, it's like you have a blank hole and you should be able to fill that up. You know, we should feedback to Adobe and tell them that, hey, you know, what's going on, man? You should be able to fill up this blank hole here. But it doesn't work. So normally what I'll do is I'll add another layer. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the same picture again. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to resize it. So I'm going to move this picture down to the bottom here. Okay? So what I'll do, you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to match this and put it up here like that. Now, don't worry. I know it looks funny. Okay? We're going to blend it together later. We're going to use the fill function to blend it together. Okay? But before we do that, now we have, we have it on two separate layers now. Here's one thing that a lot of people don't know. I can click on this, drag on this, move it up. It's not going to me move it up. Okay, move it up and merge on layer and ta-da, these two merge together as one. Well. Okay, so uh, now it's merged together as one. Well. Now finally, I can actually use the fill. Now, I hope that the Adobe server got no problem because I was trying this this afternoon and then it has problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, right, so I'm going to just, you see that I'm painting this area here now? I'm painting this area in red. So I'm telling the software, right, okay, can you try to fix this problem here? Okay, I'm going to subtract and I'm going to subtract this area here. So I want the software to fix this problem here, okay? And I'm going to click on the fill button here. So it says uploading assets again, okay? Very soon this will start charging money. So enjoy what you can. I hope it doesn't fail. It... I got a feeling it's going to fail again. You got stuck here the last time. Okay, it was successful once, but for the whole of today, it didn't work. <laughs> so not a very stable platform yet. Maybe that's maybe beta phase, that's why they haven't charged money yet. But once they perfected it, they'll probably start charging you money. Yeah, so I mean, they have to make money somewhere, right? Other than your subscription that you're already paying. Okay, while we are waiting for this to load, okay? Uh, any questions so far? I know a lot to take in. Okay, but if you think about it right, actually, hey, you almost have Photoshop on the fly already. You can take photos, you can do whatever you want to it. And the best, about, the best thing about this is that even if you don't have a paid CC subscription, you can use the software for free. It's just that you cannot uh, upload to Photoshop to open because you don't have a Photoshop to open to. 
Okay, so this is Adobe's way of like, hey, actually it worked. Okay, uh, it kind of worked. It has still some blemishes here, lah. But obviously, right, if it still has some blemishes, right, you know, the best way to try to solve this kind of problem is to, if you still want to clone stamp two or whatever, you can actually send this, mm, ah, send this, and send this over to uh, Photoshop. Or you can save it on the camera roll, and then from the camera roll, you can actually use Photoshop Fix to open it, and then use a bit of clone stamp to to fix that problem there. Okay. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Questions for me, you know, I'll still be hanging around. Uh, we are going to have dinner at Caesarea as usual. You know, feel free to join us. 